Gerald Parker with this Action News Thanks, update. Sarah. Well, right now, things are pretty quiet. It's not raining now, but it may Next tomorrow. Next, we're going to slide seven. storm headed this way from the west. Stand by, Scott we'll Twill. complete stories on that tonight at 10 o'clock. Jerry what? Foster and photographer John Bass are out there in Sky 12. Jerry, what do you see? Okay, okay. okay. tell you what, we'd like to show everybody what we see. We've got quite a view. We're up about 3,000 feet. We're going to pan straight ahead, and you're going to see Phoenix. That's going to be the metropolitan area way up there, and that's the Salt River as it makes its way down from the Buckeye area. Let's uh, take a little trip in Sky 12. First of all, starting at Stewart Mountain Dam, as we did about uh, an hour ago. As of 11.30, 70,400 cubic feet per second was flowing over Granite Reef. Uh, 2,000 is coming out of Waddell Dam. That's up into the Alba Fria River. That's the Beeline Highway, and that is the bridge across the Beeline, or across the uh, Verde River. And as you can see, it is out, so you cannot get to Payson from Phoenix. Now, speaking of this nasty river, we've been telling you all day long that everybody's been staying out of the river. Look here. Sheriff's Office sent us over just a few minutes ago, and this is what we found. Incredible, isn't it? It's a four-wheel drive vehicle with five people that went in. Look at that girl. She was just absolutely scared to death, and you can see that the water doesn't look like it's going very fast, but it's really moving. The problem is that when people go in the river, usually they drown, so do take heed. It is a dangerous situation. We'll be back with more right now, live from Sky 12. I'm Jerry Foster, along with John Bass. Cheryl, how you doing? Jerry, I assume all five people made it out of that pickup safely. Yes, indeed they did. The girl told me she was just scared to death. Everybody was. That water is really moving. Okay, thanks, Jerry. The question of what's newsworthy and what isn't kind of goes along with the individual reporter. You know, and I think what we're looking for is that uh, that our story is is fair and accurate. Uh, you know, if if it's got a lot of action in it, uh, sometimes a story with action that doesn't have the news value that a, a that another story has, uh, sometimes we use it. You know, for example, a, a minor accident. Uh, uh, many times in the helicopter, I've caught a car actually going off the road. Uh, a minor accident isn't really news, but when you catch the car actually going over the, the side of the road. Then it changes the whole perspective of the story a little bit, and even though nobody's injured, uh, and it isn't a, a lot of value there, it still makes a pretty good story because it's action, and people like to see things that are happening. And I guess the most exciting thing that I've ever done, and it had never been done before, was to film a police chase from beginning to end. Silver van with Ohio plate. He's going about 55, but he refuses to stop. On the time the van hit the Maricopa Freeway, several police units were hot on his tail. From Sky 12, we watched as the van left the freeway and headed for a project area in South Phoenix. Somehow, the van managed to weave through four police cars, narrowly missing a driver who saw what was happening and tried to get out of the way. Then through another neighborhood where the van nearly spun out. A garbage truck parked broadside in the road was dodged by the suspect and police by going through a front yard. The chase continued south on 19th Avenue to the frontage road eastbound. A police cruiser rammed the van from behind, but it was the police car that went out of control. The end came at the freeway in Grant Street. Police fired at the van as he rounded the corner. Apparently wounded, the van crashed into a car and a truck. Uh, the first unit out here was, a, was the highway patrolman, and I came right in behind him and a couple of other officers. We tried to pull him out, out of, and a struggle ensued inside, and I'm not sure what happened inside there. Somehow, luckily, no police or bystanders were injured. Jerry Foster, TV 12, Action News. Well, like I say, it's some pretty exciting stuff. This is Jerry Foster reporting live from Sky 12 in Phoenix. Now back to media probes. Every station is out to sell you its version of the news, and the competition is fierce. So they make commercials. Commercials that tell you that they have the news and that their news is the one that's got the punch. I always watch it cause it's got a lot of action. I always watch it cause it's got a lot of news. I really love it cause I get a kick out of it. And there's nothing else above it that could change my point of view. I always watch it cause I wouldn't want to miss it. Most of all, I think it really moves. Oh, what people like best about Action News is Action News. For news when it happens. For budget saving tips. 
Inside Story. For health tips. To cut through red tape. We are the direct connection. You know, local stations make a lot of money from their news programs, usually more than from any other program they do. In some cases, as much as 60% of all their profits. How? There's a one-word answer for that. Ratings. The more people watching a show, the higher that show's ratings. The higher the ratings, the more a station can charge for a commercial on that show. And in major markets, a rise of just one rating point can mean more than a million dollars in extra revenue. So when it comes to ratings, the stakes are high. A station with, say, a third-place news operation is making money, but it's not going to sit by and pass up another million. When I came out to Los Angeles two years ago, I found a station that had fallen into third place and had been struggling to get out of third place. And myself and a group of other people came out and said, right, we're going to make this place different. We're going to make it succeed, and we're going to make it succeed by doing quality television. We're going to spend a lot of money, and we're going to do more news than we've done before, more news than anyone's done before. I don't think that you can win in a news ratings war unless the people in the newsroom feel good about what they do. They've got to feel like they're number one. They've got to feel proud of what they do. And when I first got to KNXT, that wasn't the case. Hmm? And I set about to change that as quickly as I could. And we created an environment that people can do their best work in. You get me in on a bus and that's a major story. Yeah. One of the first things you've got to do is you've got to cover the news better than everybody else. If there's a fire, if there's a flood, if there's an earthquake, if there's a disaster, if there's a major event, if you're not the best at that, you might as well go home. When we got here, this station was only doing an hour's worth of news. The competition, people at ABC and NBC were doing two hours. So in the minds of the viewers and the minds of the people who worked here, news wasn't important. But it was to us, and one of the things the station did was expanded two and a half hours, which not only gave us more news than anyone else, but gave us the first news broadcast. So we're on 4.30 to 5, and everyone else comes on at 5. So whenever there was a major story, they tune into us at 4.30, and gave us a chance to show off, because there was no competition. And now, this is the Channel 2 News with Johnny Chung. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our news at 4.30. That mysterious plane hijacker, D.B. Cooper, is still missing... To turn a station around from third place to the first place is a process that takes years, not months. The last management said, You're, we're going to be number one faster than you think, and I told people it's going to take longer to become number one than you think. The thing I enjoy most about smoking is uh, the inhaling and exhaling of it. The running series next week is on non-smoking. Quitting isn't going to be easy for any of us, but over the next five nights, we're going to learn how to break our smoking habit. Day one, step one of the Channel 2 Quit Smoking program. Write down all your reasons for quitting. In the short term, all the stations in this market put on what are called mini-docs or mini-series. At the beginning of a month, you kind of strategize as to which are the best ones to do. You look at ABC, that almost everything they're doing this month is on sex. Sex is, in my view, the only topic that you can put on the air and guarantee you'll get a little jump in the ratings. That's the, that and a fabulous investigative report. Those are the two things. It's kind of a strange dichotomy. But sex and a great, wide-ranging, compelling investigative report. Uh, so ABC's got, ABC didn't do so well in comparison to the other uh, stations in the last rating period, and, and CBS was coming up real well. So I, they thought, well, we better do a lot of sex and they're doing a lot of sex and it's doing well for them i don't think i think that over a period of time that uh reflects negatively on a station which is why we don't do that we've done it i've done it i mean i've done month where i did everything everything was had to do with the sex education or transsexuals or or homosexuality or sex counseling and stuff like that i think it hurts you rather than helps you you, you have a month where you got real good ratings but i think over time people think why are they trying to con us and so i think it's, i think that's an error 
On uh, Sunday, we'll start the campaign in the Los Angeles Times, um, a higher readership le level for us. And this is the type of copy approach that we'd like to take, which is in keeping with our format that we always have. So we have a consistent look in the market compared to NBC, who right. does not in their advertising mm -hmm. at this stage. All right, what other media do we have for this? What's the other media support? Uh, we'll have our usual weight of about 250 points uh, on television, which is our best advertising vehicle that we have. Uh, 250 points, that'd make us the biggest advertiser for the week? The biggest advertiser in the market for the week, correct. Yeah, and then uh, we have the largest advertising campaign going for radio for that particular week, outweighing uh, ABC and NBC also. That's good. With uh, over 600 spots. Well, this is the week we're going to clinch it on, too. This will be. This week, a Channel 2 News exclusive. I know in my mind I shouldn't do it. I think our promotions are better and more pervasive on the schedule than our competitors, and I think that's helped us, especially in a station like ours, which was in third place. I tried to build up a sequence, and if you notice, the woman who says, I don't, I, you know, I know I shouldn't do it is very pregnant. The smokers really look stupid, too. And then, oh, yeah, really good shots of them. Smoke coming out the nose like a, a mean bowl. Dragon. Yeah. See the paper this morning? I love this. The thing about our smoking thing, the thing I love about it is going to drive NBC and ABC oh, crazy. crazy. Right next to all their ads. Yeah. They're going to say, why can't we get our stuff in the paper? They get their stuff in the paper. And uh, just a little demoralization of, of KBC and KNBC never hurt anybody. A year ago in January 1980, in January of 1979, our competitors had, for the news, approximately a 10 rating, and we had approximately a 5 rating. January of 1980, this year, our competitors have 9s and 10s, and we have 8s and 9s, and closing the gap at that uh, level is, uh, for us, a, a major, major uh, success. And we think our trends are up and theirs are down, especially NBC, so I think having done the quality of work we wanted to do, uh, we'll, we will succeed. The Channel 2 News at 6, where we're not just looking out for news, we're looking out for you. Uh, one minute to wrap it up, Mr. Swayze. It's been a long time since I sat on a news set. A lot has changed. Perhaps the biggest change is that TV news has become our main source of information. In my day, I always knew that what people didn't get from our broadcasts, they'd get from print or radio. Television wasn't then, and it still isn't. The best medium for presenting the kind of material that takes a lot of thought and reflection to understand. What TV can do is bring us the here and now. There's nothing like it for making us feel an event, whether it's a fire, an inauguration, or a war. 30 seconds. Even on this show, there were other issues we wanted to talk about, such as accuracy, objectivity, and the ownership of news operations as a whole. But like the news shows, we had a limited time, just 28 minutes and 38 seconds. And some of our subjects just didn't suit a visual medium. And we too wanted to present, as they say, an attractive and entertaining package. 10 seconds. So that's it. I'll just say goodbye to you with the same clothes I always used on the old news caravan. Well, that's the story, folks. This is John Cameron Swayze, and I'm glad we could get together. <laughs>